Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So, uh, Chris here again, doing this get good thing. Uh, and today we're going to talk about branches. This is going to be a small departure from other uh, videos so far that we've talked about because we're going to get a bit into the weeds today. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get pretty in-depth. So at a high level, we're going to talk about what branches are, why we want them, what they're good for. We're going to then talk more about, like, how does GitHub handle branches? What are branches? We're going to talk about how the Git history relates to branches and how we can use that information to ensure that the changes we want wind up where we want them. And then we're going to get into, you know, uh, actually, how do we use a CLI tool to work with branches? So uh, I've created a companion repository uh, for this video that will be posted in the description, of course. And uh, yeah, so let's just get into it. Um, basically, you know, the first thing we could do is talk about what are branches. And I think the best way to do that is to talk about what is Git doing, right? So I've got my my tablet here. I'm I'm, you know, I'm using this for the first time for this video. Uh, like I'm I'm using this for a video for the first time. So uh, please let me know if you if you think this is a good idea or or you're you're like nah nah man. So anyway, first things first. You might notice like every time we look at GitHub. Every time we look at our our repositories in GitHub, like let's just make an example, right? So first of all, we can see this little thing that says main, right? Branch main. And you you remember when we set up in the initial setup video that like we talked a lot about, you know, changing our configs or our default branch would be called main. It says we're on branch main a lot, right? So like, let's just clone this. So if we do a git clone and then let's put the SSH address, right? Uh, we see we okay, so we're we're cloning into get good branches. We're very happy about this. Uh, let's ensure that it's there in our uh, local directory. It sure is. So let's cd into it. cd get good uh, and then branches. And then I'm just gonna clear the screen so this is near the top. Let's look at what's in here. We see the readme. Uh, if we l if we ls a, we can see that. Uh, the classic, right? This is the Git uh, directory. So we're in a Git repository, a local Git repository. And then this is the thing, right? We see this on branch main. And then this is just a thing that my particular uh, terminal does, but like your, yours might not, but it tells me I'm on branch main, right? So, okay, so, but where did this branch main thing come from? What And what is it talking about? So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, so again, Back to the to the drawings here. So essentially, we can look at Git like this, right? There is this record of all the stuff that's happened in our repository, and it's 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 it has these commits, you know. So this is like our initial commit, you know. This is usually things like your readme you know, whatever, this is when you start the repository, right? And what we could do is we can look at our commits on the side here to kind of have another view of them as we're walking through the uh, the visuals. So we've got this thing and it's called main and it has these commits. So that's the initial actual branch is main. So we're just going to we're just going to label this. We're going to say this is the main, you know, branch. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. I'm not going to edit that out. Uh, I know how to spell, I promise. So main branch. That really looks like <laughs> main branch. There we go. So this is the main branch, right? And so what does that mean? Well, it's you can think of each branch as just a series of commits, right? So we see on this one, we have these three commits. We have the, the first commit or the initial commit. And then we have the second one, which is like, uh, I named it add, you know, initial uh, readme.md. 
you know, and then we have this third commit here, which is update readme.md. You know, we're just, we can just put update dot, dot, dot. But the idea here is that this is a branch, just a series of commits in a row, right? And this is our main branch, uh, which is, you know, it, it doesn't have any special powers. It doesn't have any special attributes except for the ones we give it. So we, we, we attribute some special uh, nests onto the main branch. But that's what a branch is, in essence. That's all it is, right? Now, these commits are the work that we've done so far. We're not going to talk about what these are under the hood because Git, the Git documentation does the best, you know, the best uh, version of that. So I'll, I'll link that in the description below. But, it, you know, it's important we know what this is and that this is represents, you know, our, our changes that we've done throughout. So what is a, how do we, how do we branch, right? So what's this branch thing then? If main's a branch, what are we talking about? Well, we can create new branches in, in Git. And that's kind of like one of its core main features is this idea of branching. And so at a high level, what is branching? We're just going to keep it very simple. And even though under the hood, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, which you can read about. Again, uh, we're just going to talk about like simply what is a branch. You can think of a branch as just like this, you know, and then we have this new branch over here and we're going to call this, you know, B1 for, for branch one. And this is some, this is some new branch. Okay. And it has all of the information that, pers that, is contained in this commit as well as the commits previous all right and that's it and it's it's it, it's got it's entirely new git history now it's totally separated after this point until we hit it so or until we merge it sorry and we're gonna we're gonna talk about what merging is and everything like that it, it, you know down the line but for right now just know that these two things these two entities these two branches have kind of this invisible wall between them now so what does that mean why is it useful right so let's say uh we're we're working on a project let's say that i want to work on a feature right so let's let's kind of define our our repository a bit better just so we can uh just so we can kind of follow along with with an example uh, forgive me for the, how this erasing is going. I will get better at this tablet thing. So let's look at the structure of our repository a bit better, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write up here, repo. Uh, and we can signify that this is a local repo for now that we've cloned from a remote repo. So it doesn't super matter, but we just want to be cognizant of what these terms are and what they mean. So we're going to say this is our local repo. Okay. And our local repo has uh, two or three files. We've got our app.py, a classic, right? So we'll just, we'll, we'll just say we have our uh, config.yaml. And then we have some readme, right? So let's talk about what the history of our of our repository currently looks like, right? And what we're going to do for now is just remove this reference to remote repo. Uh, and we're going to change this from local repo to, we're going to call this now the, we, you know, we know this is the, the, the local repo at this point. This is the main branch, okay? And all these files are committed. They're all part of the Git history. We're gonna mark that with a little C here, okay? Now, let's look at what the, the, the commit history looks like. You know, we've got, let's say we've got these two commits. You know, we added all these files in our initial commit. We made some changes and uh, made a new commit here. But anyway, we're, we're up to date here. This is what's called the head. This is where the head is, okay? 
Now, let's say we want to, I, I'm a developer, right? And I want to add a new feature to this application. And uh, I'm excited about it, but I'm not sure if it's going to work, right? So what I could do is I could make changes to the application. So change it to modified here. Then I could add those changes using the, the command git add, you know, whatever uh, app.py or git add dot. And that would change those to stage changes. And then I could commit those changes using, you know, uh, git commit dash M, easy peasy. And those would go back to committed changes. And we would have a new entry for our git history, right? And our head would move down. And so we're going to just signify head now with this H. It would move down to this commit. Okay, cool, right? Sounds sounds awesome. Uh, however, what if that what if that change broke the app, right? So someone's trying to use it now and the app's broken. Well, I guess we, we could just revert. We haven't talked about how to, but you can and get. We could revert or I could just edit it back or any number of things we could do anyway. But the idea here is that we, we, we made changes to our main branch, right? We were working on our main branch. And so we committed them. Everything that depends on the main branch had those changes propagated to it, right? So say you're deploying this on some uh, cloud infrastructure, you know, that's, that's keyed off of main. All those changes would just show up there, right? What if you're triggering a build that's tracking this branch? All those changes would just show up there, right? So... Do we want to do that? No, not really, right? So there must be a better way. And indeed, that is where branching comes in. So what we could have done instead is we could have created a branch. We're going to call that B1. And we could call this branch like feature branch, uh, you know, end point. Names are, are made up. They don't super matter. And now we come over to our repository and now we have this FB underscore endpoint branch. Now it still has app.py. Uh, you know, we, we have our config.yaml. We have our readme. It's still got all this stuff, right? However, when we change the FB endpoint on the FBoy, FB endpoint branch, when we change this app.py, right? We change it to modified here. And then we, uh, you know, we, we add it using git add app.py or whatever have you to stage that change. Right, and then we go ahead and commit that change with commit, get commit dash m whatever it is. We create a new entry in the git history here, but it is not created on the main branch, so nothing's happened in the main branch. In fact, the main branch doesn't even know about this, right? So let's say we add a file. Let's say we add, uh, uh, you know. I don't want to type cool new, or I don't want to write cool new feature. Uh, let's let's say uh, just feature, you know, dot py. So we've added that, right? And then we go ahead and we stage it using the command git add uh, feature dot py. Now it's staged. And then we go ahead and we commit that uh, using git commit dash m added feature or something like that. And now we'll see we've added another entry in our git log here. But again, notice two important things. Number one, main's still over here, right? Main's chilling. And we have this new file that's been committed to our git history that doesn't appear in main, right? And this is the power of branching. We can make changes to existing files. We can add new files all without touching main, right? And so in the simplest case, this is most useful because 
it means we don't have to change our app until we've tested, we've thoroughly ensured that this is not going to break anything. And then we can do this process called merging, which we'll talk about uh, later on. But for now, just understand that you can bring these, you can merge branches together. We can, we can do that once we're sure functionality and bugs are taken care of on that, on that feature branch, right? So this is the power of branch development. Also, we can uh, branch off of branches. We can have two branches uh, from the same thing at the same time that two different people are working on, right? So I could be working on app, you could be working on app, and, we, and we're not touching main, right? There is one very important thing to note about this whole process, which is that Git only cares about what's in the Git history. So let's say, let's just talk about an example real quick, right? So let's say we add another file, okay? And that file is just called like uh, feature, feature underscore one dot py because we're, in, we're incredibly creative developers. Now, if I were to switch to my main branch in Git terminal, this would come with me, right? Because this isn't, the Git, Git history has no knowledge of this. We never committed it, right? And you, you might say, okay, so, but what, what if, uh, hang on, Chris, what if we just stage it? And then what if we switch back to FB endpoint? Well, it's gonna come with us again, right? Because we, again, we haven't told, we haven't committed it. You, this is this is one of the most important things when you're getting started with Git to realize is that the Git history doesn't know about your file until you commit it. There's lots of checks in place to make sure you don't you know break stuff, and there Git's a smart enough tool that it's going to tell you uh, some of the times that some of these things are happening. But when you're swapping branches, if you've never put that file into a Git history, it's just going to come along for the ride until you commit it. So always be sure before you move on. Always be sure to commit whatever you're working on to the branch you're working on before you swap back to another branch. There are better, not better, there are different techniques we can use absolutely that will help us to, uh, you know, we don't have to commit them necessarily uh, and we can come back to those things later. But for now, let's just, let's just you know, keep in mind that if we don't tell Git about these files, through the commands git commit and you know before that staging them with git add they have no idea where they're supposed to go and so they're just going to follow you around so that's very important we're going to see an example of that in the code or not in the code but in the in the command line uh and uh yeah so i just wanted to i know this has been quite a long time and we're, we're drawing pictures and stuff and, and all of this and that but i i do think it's very this is one of the core things to understand about git is what is branching what does it mean you know say we say we added a say we added a different thing here and on our uh main branch you know we add a uh, a new folder or something called data that just contains loads of data. And then we, again, we go ahead and we stage and then we commit that, right? This is gonna generate a new entry in mains commit history, but it won't impact FB endpoint at all. Now, there are lots of, you, you, hopefully you can see, there are lots of ways we can communicate between these two branches. So we'll just we'll just clarify even more between main and FB endpoint or whatever branches you're talking about. There are lots of things we can do to move information back and forth between them. But for right now, we just want to kind of understand what is a branch. And each essentially a branch is a separate version of that repository that we create from the point that repository existed at when we use these commands to create these branches. So at a high level. You know, if you want to really simplify it, we can say that branches are just different versions of our repository that don't impact each other. Very high level, but still pretty true. So hopefully that was uh, that was productive. Uh, let me know if, if if drawing things or whatever is is 
you know, uh, something you'd like to see more of or not. But yes, that is what good branches are. That's how they work. Um, that's all we need to know for right now. So let's actually get into an example. So we're on, we're in our repository. We can see that here that we're up to date uh, and we're on the branch main, right? So that's that main trunk we, you know, you, you might hear referred to, but that's the main branch of the repository. That's this thing right here. And if we check our git log, you'll see we have the same commits in the same order as we do on GitHub. Because again, that's this GitHub page is just our remote repository. So let's see how we actually create branches. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the new commands because I think they're way more uh, reasonable and understandable than some of the old commands. But we are going to touch on the old commands because they are important. Uh, you know, they, they can do cool stuff too and you might be used to that terminology. But we're going to start with, so how do we make a new branch? Well, we use a command called git switch. And what git switch does is if we look in the git, git help switch, we can see it switches branches, right? It has this particular flag though, this dash C, uh, which is going to create a new branch. So what we can do is we can say git switch dash C feature, right? So what this is, what this command means when we break it down is we're going to git switch and then we're going to switch to a branch called feature that we create using that dash C flag. We could also use dash dash create feature, right? So, but for now we're just gonna stick with dash C so feature fits on the same line. We do that and we see this text switched to a new branch feature, perfect. Right? So, okay. So how do we tell what branch we're on when we're in our repository? You know, you might have a, a, a command line uh, interface tool or a terminal that shows you this information or you might not. So how do we do it if we can't see it just, uh, you know, just through our terminal? We can use get status. We can see we're on branch feature. We can use the command get branch, which will indicate to us that we're on the feature branch by saying, feature in green, and then having this asterisk near it. Great stuff, right? So, and that's all it takes <laughs> to, to make a branch. And what if we want to switch back to main? Git switch. Now we don't have to create main, it already exists. So we just leave that flag out. Git switch main. Switch to branch main, right? Git switch feature. We've switched, to, you know, it's really that easy. <laughs> you know, it's, all the stuff with the histories and everything is like, what is happening, you know? But the actual in practice gets handling that all behind the scenes, right? So let's do something awesome, right? Let's add something to this feature branch. So let's add, uh, uh, let's just add feature.py, right? Why not? Uh, now, if we do our get status, we can see that feature.py is untracked. So the feature branch doesn't know about this yet, right? So we have to commit it. We have to tell Git that this feature.py is supposed to be on the feature branch. So we'll just do what we've already done before. We'll git add feature.py in git status when we check. Just I'll just clear my screen, rerun that command. So in git status when we check, you'll see there it is. It's been staged, it's ready for commit. So we git commit dash M and we're just gonna say adding cool new feature. There you go, it, it, it did it. Let's check the git log. In the git log, we can see right at the top here, adding cool new feature. That's awesome. Now notice, we have this information that says origin main, origin head, and main are all on this commit. We're way over here on this commit, right? We're, we're having a great time up here on this commit. So this is, another way to show us that those other branches have no idea what we've done here, right? We'd have to tell them. So 
Let's check our Git status, make sure our working tree is clean. It sure is. We don't have anything untracked. We don't have anything unmodified. We are ready to rock. Now, let's add a dangerous new feature. So we're going to say touch dangerous feature.py. Okay. And I'm just going to drag my terminal over a little bit here so these commands can all be on the same line. So we have created a dangerous feature. When we look at our repository, we can see it right here, dangerous feature. When we look at get status, we can see it, dangerous feature, right? So let's say we're careless and we decide we don't need to tell Git about this. We added the file on the feature branch, so it must be on the feature branch. So let's try it, git switch main, okay? And then let's do a git status. Well, the dangerous feature came with us, right? And that's because, again, we haven't committed it to any particular place. Git, Git is aware that stuff is different, but it doesn't know where you want to put it, right? It doesn't assume where you want to put it. So what can we do? Well, let's just switch back to feature. Let's add the, add the uh, Git, you know, Git add dangerous feature. So now we're, we've staged this, right? And so we can see here, okay, so file to be committed. Does that protect us now? If we go back to git switch main, so we're switching back to our main branch, right? Did that protect us? And the answer is no, because staging it just says we're going to commit it. You know, hey, git, keep track of this in this state. We're going to commit this, right? Or we want to commit it in this state at some point but it doesn't tell it where to commit it, right? It doesn't say where it's supposed to go. So we're gonna switch one more time back to feature and we are going to commit that feature, uh, adding dangerous, uh, dangerous feature. We go ahead and commit it. And now we check our get status. We see our working tree is clean. We LS, we see the file dangerous feature.py is there. And when we get switch back to main and we LS, we see that there is no dangerous feature. There's just the readme. When we use get status, we see that there is no dangerous feature. And even better, when we go to get log, we have no knowledge of any, we made two commits to that feature branch, right? Two of them. We have no knowledge that they've happened in main. Main's unaware of them, right? And this is the power of branch. This is the, incredible power of branches in Git and on GitHub. So let's just look at one more thing. So I'm going to show you guys how we can use kind of the old school commands to move around, which is with Git uh, checkout feature. You can think of it like checking out a book. So we're, you know, we're checking out a book, we're checking out a branch. Uh, and then we can get back to main with uh, git checkout main. We can create branches with git branch and then branch name. So if I say feature v1, and then I look at my git branch command, you'll see that I've created a new branch called feature v1, which we can then check out using the command git checkout feature v1. And again, we can look many different places to see what branch we're on. In this case, we use get status to see we're on uh, branch feature v1. Uh, now, let's go back to main using the switch command, just because I feel like it's a little bit easier. And let's go ahead and remove that feature v1 branch with the command get branch uh, dash d for delete, uh, and then the branch name we want to remove. So that's get branch and then dash D for delete feature V1. And that's the branch we want to remove. We can see that that does delete that branch. Now, if we try to get switch to feature V1, you'll see invalid reference. What is feature V1? Never heard of that guy. Uh, and when we look at get branch, we can see there is no more feature V1, right? So what if we wanted to, using the old school terminology, what if we wanted to make a branch and check it out. Well, we can use git checkout dash B for branch. Uh, and then we can say, you know, feature V1 just to keep things consistent. And again, just like git switch dash C, this is going to create and then switch to 
the branch we've created. Uh, so we'll get switch back to main and we are going to again get branch dash D feature V1. So we're just gonna get rid of that branch because we don't really need it. And we can ensure that we've, uh, we can ensure we've removed it by checking get branch and seeing that indeed it is gone. Let's look at one more example before this video ends. I know it's super long, but uh, branches are kind of like one of the core parts of uh, Git. So uh, please uh, forgive me for taking up so much of your time, but really think it's important to, to, to know this stuff well and to understand what's happening. So let's, we're, let's, first of all, let's just check. We're on main. We can check that with git status or with git branch. We can see that we're on main. Let's create a file called, you know, cool feature.py. Let's look at our git status and see that it is untracked. We want to track it, of course, so we're going to add that cool feature.py. And you'll notice that I'm not using git add dot a lot. I, so you can use git add space dot. Now we'll just add everything that's uh, in your present working directory or below it to your uh, to staging. But we're just going to be very specific about what we're adding for now. So that you're in the habit with any CLI tool, explicit is better than not. Uh, it's, it's almost always better to be explicit because it, limits the potential amount of, of, of errors that you can run into or mistakes you can make. It doesn't remove them entirely, believe you me, but it, it, it reduces them. Now, again, we know that this is not yet committed. It's just been staged. We added it, but we didn't commit it. So we have to go ahead and commit it. And we're just going to say, you know, adding, uh, you know, coolest feature. And we can commit that to our Git tree. And then if we look at our Git log, we can see here's that added cool, adding coolest feature. But again, we don't see anything to do with our feature branch. And if we look, if we get uh, switch to feature and we look at our Git log, we can see we no longer see main. Main's gone, right? And so, what has happened is that main and this branch have diverged. So we're on two different paths now. Uh, that, that The word diverge is scary in and of itself, but like it's not at all scary. Uh, we, you know, it just means that we're on two different paths now and we can't, we can't see anything that they're doing. They can't see anything we're doing. That's just the way we want it, right? Branches are one of the coolest features in Git. They're one of the best features for productivity. Um, ba basically like branches and the way Git does it, because notice like when we get switch back to main here, I mean, this takes no time at all, right? It, it's so fast. And you know, you can again, read the, the documentation to figure out why that is, but this kind of development really allows you so much flexibility, so much power that it's it's hard to ignore the, the benefits of it. Uh, and if, if GitHub was just, you can branch, it would still be an incredibly popular tool. Uh, the way that Git and GitHub handle this whole branching thing is amazing. Once you get used to what's happening, once you understand what's going on, uh, you're gonna have so much, so much at your fingertips that you can do with this feature, right? You can add new features and then maybe you need to add features on those features. So you add another branch and it's the, the whole thing just works so well. And then it works really well in the GitHub ecosystem with things like pull requests, uh, which, which allow such amazing collaboration. Um, you know, branching is one of the core amazing features of Git. I can't, I can't sing its praises enough. Branches are the best. Uh, use them, get used to them. They're incredible. They're amazing. Wow. That's, uh, I'll stop <laughs> hammering on about it, but, uh, this is a longer video, but again, we really want to drill down into what is a branch? What is it doing? What happens in the branch, right? Uh, how does it relate to this idea of a commit history? We're kind of expanding on that as we go through these. Uh, so again, uh, thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, there's this repository where you can move through creating a branch and using the switch command. 
uh, or using the old method of checkout or get branch. Um, so go, go ahead and fork this repository, clone it, and then add some branches, right? And just play around with the branch feature. Add some files. Uh, see, see, see how that works for yourself. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, appreciate it as always. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.